Hey, so my name is Elizabeth Stark, and I am the CEO and co-founder of a company called Lightning. And we're building technology called Lightning Network that's scaling Bitcoin and blockchain. So it enables instant, high volume, extremely low fee transactions that where you don't have counterparty risk, so you don't have to trust any intermediary to send it. It's totally decentralized. Bitcoin is so many things to so many different people. Um, but at its core, Bitcoin is both uh, a currency. It's a digital currency that is one of the internet that is decentralized. There's no central arbiter. And it's also a protocol. So underlying Bitcoin is a technology called the blockchain. And this blockchain is a ledger of the transactions that occurred. And it's a ledger that cannot be tampered with or modified. And there's an entire network of what is called miners who process the transactions of the Bitcoin blockchain and they verify that these transactions are correct. Because fundamentally, uh, what Bitcoin solves is what is called the double spend problem. How do you have a distributed network uh, that enables transactions where you can ensure that somebody hasn't spent the same money twice? And what it has is consensus across the different participants of the network that then ensures that if I spend you know, my one Bitcoin, I'm not going to spend that same Bitcoin again. And, and it was really novel in that when Bitcoin came out, nobody had really solved this problem before. So whether we can make banks or, or central banks absolute, sorry, start over. Whether we can make banks or central banks obsolete is certainly a topic of much debate uh, within the community. Um, Certainly, we can have far more financial transactions where we don't need a central intermediary. Bitcoin in and of itself really is a currency of the internet, where you're able to send transactions and you don't have to log into a bank account and then have to wait for the bank to say, approve it. For example, in the US, it can take us three days just to send a bank transfer to somebody else in the US, which to me, you know, we're in 2016. How does it take so long? Um, so with Lightning, the technology that we're building enables very high volume transacting at an extremely low fee. You know, for example, to send a, a wire transfer or a bank transfer, it can be 30, 40 euros or more. And then there are other fees on top of that. So our goal is to take out the intermediaries that are, that are taking, say, you know, fees in the financial system, cut them out, and have a much more decentralized uh, system where you don't have to have those intermediaries. Certainly the concept of an internet-based currency is something that some people, including some banks and governments, are afraid of. Um, my perspective on whether Bitcoin can interact with what we call fiat currencies or the currencies of you know, various nation states is that actually they can be compatible. Um, my vision of Bitcoin is that it can be a protocol that connects all the other currencies in the world because right now it's actually not all that easy to exchange various currencies. Uh, and for example, you know, for people that use a technology like email, maybe they have a Gmail account or a Yahoo account, but they don't really understand that underlying that is SMTP, it's an email protocol. So similarly, I foresee a world in which it's possible where you have, say, euros or US dollars on a blockchain, and then you're using Bitcoin to, say, transfer dollars to somebody else even, and then Bitcoin can be the intermediary, and then the end person could then ultimately receive dollars or euros. Um, I also foresee a world in which uh, Bitcoin can power micropayments. So right now it's not even possible to send one cent or a tenth of a cent on the internet or really anywhere. I mean, I can't give you a tenth of a cent, I can only give you one cent. Uh, so what Bitcoin potentially enables is very small value transactions, but at a very high volume as well. So you can envision instead of having invasive advertising, um, you could pay a couple cents every time you read an article or watch a video, and then you won't be tracked on the internet. Um, or, you know, with Internet of Things devices, how are they going to pay for things or in virtual reality? Um, the technology behind Bitcoin can help power a lot of this. So there are a lot of currencies in the digital currency space. Uh, Bitcoin is certainly the best known to date. Um, there's one called Ethereum, which is focused on uh, building smart contracts. Um, they have Turing completeness, which means that any computing process that can be uh, created can be written within their system. 
Um, their currency is called Litecoin, which was supposed to be the silver to Bitcoin's gold. Um, now there's one called Zcash, which is recently coming out, uh, which is fully anonymous. Interestingly, people think Bitcoin's anonymous. It's actually not because you can trace the transactions on the ledger. There's a public ledger that everyone in the world can see. Uh, Zcash, uh, by contrast, is fully anonymous um, in its most anonymous form. Uh, there are two types of transactions. And they've built, they've used new novel cryptography to enable that type of anonymity. And their goal is, uh, if people are familiar with Tor, the anonymization technology, to be a Tor type technology for currency. So for people that are dissidents or that are, their governments are persecuting them and all sorts of other use cases. Um, of course, it is a controversial topic when you have fully anonymous money, but it's pushing the boundaries of what is possible. So when people ask if Bitcoin is only used, you know, for drug dealers or the dark web, my response is generally that the US dollar is used for gangsters and drug dealers. Um, frankly, I think the US dollar is far more dangerous than Bitcoin. As I said, a technology like Bitcoin has a public record and a ledger of transactions. There are technologies that make it more anonymous and privacy is very important, for example. You know, I don't necessarily want people to know how much income I make. And actually, if I use Bitcoin's blockchain fully for my income, it would theoretically be possible to maybe track that. Um, so frankly, I don't believe Bitcoin's primary use case is at all these nefarious uses. Um, there are lots of people using it for remittances. There are lots of people using it for investment. And, you know, like all currency and all technology, you know, people can use the internet for good and bad. People can use cell phones for good and bad. Similarly, they can use this technology, but I don't believe it's any different than either the US dollar, which is, by the way, a very dangerous technology because so many drug dealers use it or criminals. Um, and if anything, its transparency can be beneficial. So a lot of governments have been talking about banning cash and they want to be able to track money. And for example, um, I've done a lot of work in the internet freedom movement and I have many friends that are privacy advocates. And from their standpoint, you know, in terms of their own freedom, they don't want to be tracked because there are so many ways in which, you know, uh, financial institutions or advertisers or otherwise can track what store you're going into and where you are. So I do believe the ability to to transact without your identity is important, especially for a day-to-day -day consumer basis. You know, I don't want to have to go buy coffee and be tracked when I buy my three euro coffee. Um, so digital currencies, especially for example, like Zcash, so Zcash is the closest in a way to cash because it is fully anonymous. You know, if I give three euros, people don't know who I am, they don't have my information and identity. So technologies like that can potentially help um, on the digital side. But frankly, I do believe a lot of people, you know, are still attached to cash. I don't think we should ban it. And I think people should have the option to use what they want to use in terms of currency.